Welcome cuties. Let's create. Good afternoon, everybody. I decided to do a video um, to share an experience that I have been going through for the past couple of months and not gonna lie, I'm a bit nervous because it's it makes me a little vulnerable and it's a bit of a personal story but I decided that if it's gonna help someone that is going through the same thing or has gone through the same thing then I will share my story um, but to give a background I stopped doing videos in July or August um, because I didn't like the quality of the videos that I was producing and so I was feeling a little burnt out and I was feeling a little frustrated so I decided to take a break and I would come back in October because then I could do a bunch of Halloween themed videos and mm, plans changed <laughs> so September 19th uh, my husband and I found out that I was pregnant and we were a bit nervous but we were also excited to start that new chapter in our lives and uh, I, w I made a doctor's appointment as you know as soon as we found out pretty much and sadly because of COVID I had to go by myself but it was fine um, you know, I just, they said that no visitors could come with me, which was a bit of a bummer because I was like, even if, you know, I lived close to my mom and my husband couldn't make it, you know, it'd be nice if, you know, just have someone, but it was fine. It was no big deal. So I go in for a doctor's appointment. I'm sorry. I lost my train of thought for a second. And I was very early. They couldn't really they couldn't see anything on the ultrasound um, so I was a lot I wasn't as far along as I originally thought and they took my blood work to see how my hormones were looking and uh, they were going up so that was a good sign and I honestly was feeling pretty good because I wasn't feeling very nauseous and looking back it's probably because I was so early because my mom, she had really bad uh, morning sickness. So I was, <laughs> I was a little afraid because um, I was like, oh man, I just know that she's suffered so much and I, I don't want, <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to go through that. But time went on and I did get more nauseous. Even just the thought of the word food would just like make me queasy and just, yeah. And it's unlike any other nauseous feeling and yeah so <laughs> there was that they told me to come back in two weeks and that we would do an ultrasound again and they would do blood work to see how my levels were doing and so I go in and things are looking really good and they take my blood work my uh, HCG levels are very, you know, getting up there, and they were able to kind of guess that I was about six weeks. So I was still a bit early to really see anything, but I'm going to compare myself to a chicken and a chicken egg because it's easier for me, but they were able to see pretty much like a shell that was going to help protect the baby of where it was growing, and then the baby would like grow inside that little shell that's the, the easiest way that I can explain it for those who haven't gone through this but so they do my blood work levels are looking good they're about 17,000 and they said come back in two weeks but I get a message they tell me that what my levels were and then they also tell me that I have low progesterone levels so that's another 
hormone or something. I'm not too familiar, but they said that, that was very low and they would give me medication to help hire it and they wanted me to come back that following Monday. So October 19th, I go in, <clears throat> excuse me, I am by myself uh, and what happens is they do an ultrasound and things did not turn out the way that I had hoped. Um, so what the doctor told me is that progesterone kind of gives you an idea of how I don't want to say how well the pregnancy is going but um, your chances of miscarrying or having a healthy pregnancy is what he kind of told me along those lines and he said a healthy pregnancy that is you know going to be a good pregnancy and it's going to last is around 25 but and then one to five is like not looking good and my levels were six and looking at the thing the uh, ultrasound it all I had was that shell. There was no yolk, you could say. There was no baby forming on the inside. And he said that it may take a while for my body to recognize that I'm not pregnant anymore. And I was just in shock. I, I didn't even know what to think. And yes, I cried. <laughs> and. I, you know, he, he, he was very apologetic and he's like, I'm so sorry. He's like, there's nothing I could have done differently. And he's like, so, you know, don't beat yourself up about, you know, doing that. And it was, I, you know, sat there for a minute after he left the room and I, I, I didn't want to believe it. You know, I, he my, it was just late to grow. It was just slow to grow. <laughs> and it was really hard. I had to get blood drawn, um, to do, to check the levels to kind of see where they were at. He said that my levels would probably go up and then they would go back down once my body realizes, oh, we're not pregnant anymore. Um, so even just trying to check out to leave the doctor's office was a little challenging because I just wanted to uh, break down and be alone. <laughs> but then uh, it was hard to tell my mom and it was hard to tell my husband and it was, it was hard to tell other people. I have gone in for the past month now, um, going in every Friday, getting blood work done, and very slowly has my levels gone down. And it was really hard at first, and I think a part is still pretty hard. I, I don't really like to think about it, because I just want to be a mom. You know, I just, I, I want my husband and I to start this next chapter and I want I want us to have kids and I'm excited and it's really hard to hear those words of you know like you're not pregnant anymore and it was difficult because I was still having a lot of morning sickness and feeling nauseous and then I started dealing with headaches and it was it was really tough to feel pregnant, but not be pregnant. And, uh, I, I still sometimes think about it and kind of try to figure out what I'm supposed to learn from this process. And sometimes I feel like I know what I'm supposed to learn and other times I don't. And sometimes I don't understand why I had to go through this. But 
I do tell myself that, you know, the timing is just not right. And... You know, we don't, we don't know where we're going to be long term, so... Right now is just not the right time, and when my body goes back to normal, and it slowly is, I, I feel like I'm not as nauseous, any, you know. There's still moments where I'm like, oh, whoa, I feel a little nauseous, but um, I, feel, I feel pretty normal, um, which seems insane because the month of October was so long. It was, I just literally laid in bed because I just did not feel good. I, my body felt like crap. And at first it was hard because, you know, I, I was, you know, I, like I said, I want to be a mom. I want, I want to be pregnant. I want to, you know, I want to go through this. And it's hard because a lot of people on social media, I, I can't, <laughs> I can't go on because it's almost one of those things that you're just like, oh, I don't have what all these other people have. And, you know, I, I see a lot of my friends who are pregnant and about to have kids and I go, why can't I have that? And uh, that's another reason why I decided to share my story is to kind of show people like life isn't always daisies, roses, and rainbows or whatever life is hard and things suck and life doesn't you know your plans don't always turn out and hard times come and it has been hard and I drew this picture because this is kind of how I have felt it's not me because <laughs> uh, I, I'm not that skinny but that's another story and another problem. But I have felt kind of, I wouldn't say empty, but a little disappointed. Um, just a little, a little melancholy. <laughs> you know, just a little, a bit sad. And it comes and goes. There's times where, like, I feel fine and it's like, Life is fine. Life's getting back to normal. Great. I have to do dishes again. <laughs> I have to clean the house again, which is still a bit of a struggle. Thank goodness for masks, because I wear a mask as I do dishes, because I just can't. I still can't stand dishes. I just, it still kind of makes me a little nauseous, but. I also drew lilies, because I looked up tried to see what if there was a flower because flowers represent different things and even colors represent different things but I wanted to see if there was a flower that represented loss because even though I, I wasn't as far along as some other people have to go through but I found out that lilies represent sympathy and I, I guess I I, I do empathize and sympathize with people who miscarry much further along than I was. I, it breaks my heart that anyone has to endure this kind of pain. And sometimes I feel like my pain and my sadness isn't justified because I technically didn't have a baby even growing, but... I still feel a loss of why can't my body do what it's supposed to. And I empathize with the women who struggle to even get pregnant. It's, it's in women nature to want to have children. And I, I get that not everyone wants children. I get that. But... A lot of us just want children and it's hard when plans don't turn out the way we want them to when we can't achieve what we've been dreaming of our whole lives you know like my whole life I've wanted to have a family and I, I want to have kids and don't worry <laughs> 
I'm a, we're gonna have kids, you know, and like I said, and right now it's just not the right time, and you know, this doesn't, I don't give up of being like, well, I tried once and it didn't work, no more. <laughs> like, that's not how it's gonna happen, but you know, sometimes it feels a bit hopeless and feels a bit pointless to even hope to try again, and I'm not gonna lie, it also kind of scares me because I don't want to feel this way again. So it scares me to be like, I don't know if I want to be pregnant because I'm scared of feeling and going through the same thing. I don't want to feel like my body can't do what it's supposed to. I feel like it's my fault because my body wasn't the one that was able to, you know, <laughs> create a child. It, it feels really weird. I, I don't want to <laughs> really, I don't want to give children the talk, but <laughs> I know that there's hope. And I know things will be okay. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, ring the bell, give the video a like or a comment, stay a while and watch a couple more episodes, and until next time, keep creating!